Hallelujah. Come on and bless the Lord all over the world. Hallelujah. I don't know what you're blessing him for. He might have done, healed your body. He might have delivered you. Hallelujah. Give me just a little bit of more work. You'll pray the song. That one song we can ready to go into the word. That's it. We're in Mark 8 chapter. Mark chapter 8.
Just make us cry. You don't just make us shout. 
You don't make us just speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. But you come to work something within us. Somebody in the room is going through something in their heart. It's a heart condition. It's an emotional condition. The Lord is restoring somebody. The Lord is speaking to your heart. Hallelujah. He's drawing you back close to him. He said, come unto me, all you that labor, and I'll give you rest. He's speaking to your heart right now. He's been searching. He's been searching for that place. The Lord wants to bring you back to himself. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is doing it right now. Sometimes you don't even know what the Lord is doing in your heart. He's working something in your heart. It's a personal thing. Hallelujah. It's not about me as the pastor. I'm just a facilitator. But God is working something in your heart. Hallelujah. You don't, when he come to make you cry, he's working something. Hallelujah. Broken heartedness. Hallelujah. Broken relationship. Hurt relationship. Hallelujah. The Lord is working it in your heart right now. Hallelujah. He's looking for you to cry out to him. And open up your heart. You build up walls in your heart. Hallelujah. The Lord said, take the walls down and let him in. Hallelujah. The Lord wants to tear down the walls and let him in. Hallelujah. Let the Holy Ghost in. Hallelujah. Not just anybody, not just any man. Hallelujah. But the Holy Ghost wants to come and dwell with you. Hallelujah. Speak to your heart. Hallelujah. The Lord should just say amen if you receive that today. Come on and say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is doing something. Hallelujah. He's doing a new thing. He said, behold, I will do a new thing. Hallelujah. He's doing something new in your life, in your heart. He wants to take you deeper, past the surface level. Hallelujah. Past the bench warmer saint. Hallelujah. He wants to do something with you. Hallelujah. Do something in your heart. Hallelujah. Somebody said it's an inside job today. Hallelujah. It's an inside job. He's working something on the outside, working on the inside. Something on the inside, working on the outside. We're all about the change in my life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go to Mark. Hallelujah. Chapter 8, verse 34. Then I'm going to refer to, I'm going to read from uh, Matthew chapter 19. Hallelujah. The Lord has already worked. But we have to hear the word. Hallelujah. Mark 8 and 34. And then Matthew 19 and 16. Mark 8, 34. Matthew 19 and 16. When we get to Matthew, I just want you to listen. Okay? When we get to the Matthew text, I just want you to listen. But Mark, we're going to read together. If you can stand uh, while you're finding that Mark 8. Thank God for, for um, a, a blast from the past. I heard through the grapevine that New Beginning, Church of God, Christ Saints. Is that correct? Am I getting that right? New, New Beginning? I know that Pastor Wilson is not there anymore, right? But New Beginning, am I getting it right? Okay, so my mind went all the way back. Because <laughs> uh, they, their uncle, uh, I'm a church boy, we know so many church people, but uh, these folks are special. Elder Adam Wilson built the roof on our church at Refreshing Spring Church of God in Christ out in Hamilton when my dad was pastor. Elder Wilson is a roofer. He got up on that roof in like his 70s and was working on our roof. Thank God for him. Thank God for We go way back. I'm not going to reminisce. But um, Elder Craig, Pastor Craig, was my childhood friend. We grew up. My dad would take us out to their church and, um, and New Beginning. And my dad would work on the church and help Elder Wilson, their grandfather, her, her father, her grandfather, um, and that's divine intervention because what happened was, and I'm about to uh, probably embarrass Hannah, but Hannah became best friends with Shekila. Did I get it right? Shekila happened to be the granddaughter of one of my spiritual fathers um, from Dayton, Ohio. Didn't even know. Completely different cities. And I got excited when, I, when she began to drop names. I said, wait a minute, does, they ain't just anybody. Them Wilson can pray. Them Wilson can reach out. I preached my first revival at New Beginning. <laughs> anyway, let's get in the Word. We'll have to do that after church. Uh, we do have some chicken, so let me get out of the way, in and out the way. So we have an afternoon service at 5 o'clock with Christ Temple Church of God in Christ. And uh, Mark 8, 34. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So this is Jesus talking. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel of the same shall save it. Amen. And the Bible reads in parables and mysteries like that. Lose to save. Save to lose. I think that's so fascinating. 
verse 36. This is my key verse. It sounds familiar to you. For what shall it profit a man, woman, boy, or girl, if he or she or whoever shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever there shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. You can be seated in the presence of God. I'm going to get my game, my title, and just go right there from verse 37. My title comes from 37. I don't want to gain the whole world and lose my soul. I don't want to gain the whole world and lose my soul. Hallelujah. Listen to this. I just want you to listen. I'm going to read Matthew 19 and 16 in a contemporary version. And behold, a man came up to him saying, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, Which ones? And Jesus said, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 20, the young man said unto him, all these have I kept from my youth. What do I still lack? Jesus said unto him, if you will be perfect, go sell what you possess and give to the poor, you will have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Michael Jackson was one of the most famous individuals in history. He won 13 Grammy Awards, including eight for the album Thriller. He got for the album Thriller, he won eight alone. Michael Jackson was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame twice. In 1997, as a member, in 1997, as he was looking for the chicken, he already came in downstairs. <laughs> I had to address that. In 1997, as a member of Jackson 5, and in 2001, for the solo career, Jackson also helped open the doors for black artists on the radio on television. He had so many accomplishments. He was not just a superstar, he was a megastar. Michael Jackson was known in Japan, in China, and uh, etc. He was known in Russia. I went over to France uh, a couple years ago and they knew all about Michael Jackson. When I went to Africa and Liberia, everybody knew about Michael Jackson. They were playing Michael Jackson songs. But when Michael Jackson was, I think, 50 years old, he took medication because he was addicted to pres prescription pills to help him sleep, and he never woke up. The Bible says, what does it profit a man to gain his own world and lose his soul? When he was on the earth, everybody was celebrating Michael Jackson. People, it was, it was really crazy because you can watch a concert, and uh, people would be uh, fainting, grown men. They have to take him out in wheelchairs when he was singing. He would, he, he would sing the way, the, the way you make me feel. And if you watch the concert, it'd be grown men fainting. It's a spirit in that place. A spirit, not the spirit, a spirit, a foreign spirit in that place. Um, when he would sing and perform, people worshiped him. And none, none, none of his accomplishments, none of his money could help him. I mean, there's all the controversy about him and the children and everything, and him abusing children. But people put him on a pedestal, but nothing that he did to ever help him get closer to heaven. Taylor Swift came to town, and I learned something new this year. People that uh, listen to Taylor Swift, the fans, they call Swifties. And then I thought to myself, people will make up any ridiculous thing just to belong to something, just to identify to something. And I was teaching at my university where I teach, and half the class was, Swift, was Swifties. And they all had a testimony about 
they were so fortunate to see Taylor Swift live. <laughs> they were literally like testimonies. I couldn't even hardly teach in my, class, my history class, minister, because they were all had their testimonials about how fortunate they were to uh, have seen Taylor Swift. Swift had more than, she sold more than 13 million albums. She had numerous awards and accolades to add to her long list of accomplishments, even, even including being the top selling digital artist in music history, receiving the Artist of the Year Award, et cetera, et cetera. There's a whole uh, write-up about her and people, she was in the Songwriters Hall of Fame, and people point to Taylor Swift as that's the person that's a role model. That's who I want my children, my children to be like. And that's the, the worldly mindset. That's what, hey Deacon, the, the air working now. Let's give the, the Lord a round of applause for the air kicking in. I feel the air, y'all feel the air now? <laughs> he was doing some, some uh, working some magic today. Uh, but uh, the people, the worldly mindset is, I want to be rich, I want to be famous, I want to be worshiped like Taylor Swift. And they were almost in tears in my class when I was talking about how wonderful Taylor Swift was. And it's really covetous because they want to be like her. They want people to worship them. They want to have her money too. But God's parameter is not the same parameter as ours. The way, the way we measure things, and we, the way we measure success, the way we measure a person doing very, very well is not the same as how God measures. Taylor Swift's album of the year her 13 million albums that she sold, her songwriters Hall of Fame will, will, will get her one step closer to heaven. Not even, not even a baby step. Not even, not even a little bitty step like this. Her, her, her Grammy or whatever she has won't even get her this close to heaven like this. Y'all see my foot? It won't even get her that close. It ain't even gonna get her this close like that. It does nothing for her, but the world will continue to celebrate those individuals and keep them lifted up. And then there's Beyonce. They got all these nicknames for people, they call her Bay. And then they have a whole movement on social media called the Beehive. And on the Beehive, they can attack you. If, if they're they're, they're uh, diehard Beyonce fans. And on Twitter, if you say something against Beyonce, like millions of followers will attack you. Don't say nothing about Beyonce. One time we were in class, and I brought up the topic that she was not a role model. I began to point out that, I said I don't really know her personally, but based on her music and the, what she portrays, I began to tell her she dresses inappropriately. Uh, she's not a, a role model for children. She always got on these, uh, to me it looked like a negligee that she would wear in the bedroom or something. And it's made out of leather, she be performing in that for all these people. It ain't even tasteful, I wouldn't want my wife out there doing that, Mr. Jay-Z. And uh, she, she dresses it appropriately. Her songs are, uh, you know, many of her songs are sexual, and she does not honor God. She might, you know, say, thank God for Jesus Christ just to please the fans, but she's not saved. She's not a role model. And oh man, those sisters attack me in the class. You don't know anything about her. I bet neither do you. I said, if Beyonce see you on the side of the road, she'll leave you on the side of the road. Thank you. <laughs> I said, if she saw you, if you was down there on, 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 uh, on Republic, downtown, amen, needing two nipples, and all she had to do was give you a dollar. She wouldn't even give you a dollar. You'd be down there staking on the side of the road. And I said, why y'all so committed to her? It's idolatry. The Bible says, what does it profit a man to gain his whole world and lose his soul? And so nothing against Beyonce personally, but we know that all of her albums and all of her Super Bowl performances will not get her anywhere closer to God. Amen. And she could gain the whole world. These people are gaining the whole world. That's what the Bible says. There's a scripture in Matthew, the fourth chapter, where Satan goes to, you've read it before, he goes up to Jesus and he says, all of these things I'll give you if you bow down and worship me. And the Lord rebuked him. He said, you shall only serve the Lord thy God. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him that only shall you serve. But Satan made that proposition to Jesus. He said, I'll give you all this if you worship me. A lot of these stars and, and people in society are making that decision. That they're, they're worshiping. They may not always be bow down worshiping him like a Satan worshiper, but they choose his ways. And the devil promised people the world, but they'll lose their soul if they don't receive Christ. 
If Beyonce and Jay-Z don't receive Christ before they die, if Taylor Swift don't receive Christ before she dies, they'll lift up their eyes in hell. By the way, this is being broadcast on YouTube, so and I don't care if you don't like it or not. You need to be saved. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hey, but I'm not trying to be mean. I just want to. Actually, I'm, I'm being very nice by telling you about heaven. Hey, Amen. This is this is live. Hey, Amen. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, and clap one more time. Hey, Amen. Let me get it. Let me go deeper. Hallelujah. I'm not gonna tune up here. That's gonna rush me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's practice. Hallelujah. Give me some preaching music. That's my key right there. Oh, what does it profit a man to gain his whole world? And lose his soul. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm not practicing. I feel good right now. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. And so those, amen, I got some help back there. It's my daughter, my three-year-old. Amen. Those individuals will not go, go any closer to heaven. Now, um, the Bible talks about denying yourself in verse 1. It says, Deny himself and take up your cross and follow me. That's my first point. Self-denial. Christ wants us to give up our own plans. We all have plans, but our, your plans may not align with the plans of Christ. Whether you are in middle age or whether you're in the, the senior years of your life or whether you are a teenager, your plans may not align. Make sure your plans align with God and what God has you to do. Uh, give your all to him. That's another point the Bible makes, to give your all to him. It says, um, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Give him your all. Denying yourself means give the Lord your all. We would say, I give up all. I give up all. I give up all. I give up all. I give up all, I give up all. Amen, and we would, that's what we need to do. Every single person, you need to give up all so that you can know what the Lord wants you to do. Whether you were a teenager in high school, and when you at that age, when you were a teenager, you are you, uh, trying to decide which direction to go in. Let God lead you, let the Holy Ghost lead you. Amen, first of all, you need the Holy Ghost abiding on the inside. Don't just get surface level saved, but let the Lord fill you with the Holy Ghost. So that you can hear what it is he wants you to do. And you, you're going to have, when you get saved, you, you're influenced by the Holy Ghost. And that's what leads you to Christ. But you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit so he can guide you. And lead you. You say, I don't believe in all that. Well, you don't believe in the Bible. Hallelujah. The Bible, this is not my doctrine. The Bible says be filled with the Spirit. Amen. And, and he will guide you and lead you in, in your relationships. Sometimes we have idols in our life. It may not be a physical idol like in the Old Testament, like Baal or Ashtaroth, the, the Old Testament idols, but an idol can be your career. You can be so caught up in your career, and this is the danger for me. I can be so caught up in my career, my academic career, that, that I uh, forget God, or that I get distracted from doing what God want, wants me to do. That's a, that's a temptation for everybody in the room. Don't let, don't let being so caught up in this world that you forget what God has for you to do. A different kind of idol. There's an idol of money. There's some, some people always talking about money. They want all, and you see that on society, on TV all the time. They want more money. More, we, we used to have this saying in uh, this old show, Living Color. They would say, more money, more money, more money. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> We always said, more money, more money. And, and that's some people's mindset. Money can be an idol. Another idol can be false religion. You have all of these different kinds of astrology and uh, witchcraft and Hebrew Israelites. And that's an idol, too. Uh, relationships. Many times, there's somebody in your life that's, that's causing you from moving closer to God. That person is causing you to be in an ungodly relationship. It's a secret sin. You need to go to somebody and expose the devil. And, and uh, don't feel bad that somebody's going to judge you. Not here. We don't do that here. Go to somebody that you trust, a prayer warrior, myself, first lady, Mother Charles, one of the, some of the leaders in the church, Minister Freeland, and you say, you know what? I got this thing going on in my life. There's a person that I'm in a relationship with that's ungodly. 
I need to be delivered. Amen. Don't hold on to that thing. Don't hide that thing. The devil works in secret. Amen. You might have been in, a, in an internet relationship on your cell phone late at night when everybody's asleep through Snapchat or Instagram or Twitter or uh, all these things. Some young man has had you in bondage. Amen. You need deliverance from God so he can use you. Amen. That is inhibiting your relationship with Christ. It's an idol. You say it right now. I don't know. It ain't that bad. I can hear it right now in your mind. It ain't that bad. This thing that I'm going through ain't that bad. I got this. That's how the devil's going to keep you. You need to expose it. One of the things that exposes the devil is bringing it out of the dark into the light. And he said, I don't know how I'm going to be delivered. I don't know. This, I really feel this thing has got a hold of me, but I'm going to put it in the light so that the saints can pray for me. And when the saints begin to pray, let the Lord have his way. The Spirit of the Lord is coming down. It's coming down. It's coming down. The Spirit of the Lord is coming down. When the saints begin to pray, let the Lord have his way. The Spirit of the Lord is coming down. Amen. Do I have a witness today? Amen. I got a tired church this morning. <laughs> Amen. But I'm not tired. Hallelujah. I can do this by myself, but it sure helps to have some friends to help praise me. Uh, praise him. I said to me, don't praise me. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise with me is what I meant to say. <laughs> the cell phone can be your idol. Yeah. Amen. There are people right now that can be an uh, author, but they stuck on their cell phone. You spend two hours a day. If you spend two hours a day in a five-day work week, you spend 10 hours of your life on, cell, on your cell phone every week. That's 10 hours. You could have wrote a best-selling novel. You could have taken some painting classes. You could have went back to school. 10 hours times three times 52 weeks in a year, that's a, lot of, that's, that's a lot of time you're spending on social media. That's a lot of time you're spending on Instagram. One of the bondages that Satan has today is through Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, social media, uh, inbox. In, folk on inbox all day, and the Lord can't use you. It's an idol. It's an addiction. You know there's a hotline called cell phone addiction? You need to call the hotline. Hallelujah, then call on Jesus. Uh, if you call on Jesus, uh, he'll answer prayers. If you call on Jesus, uh, he'll answer prayers. Hallelujah, God wants to deliver somebody from the cell phone addiction. Hallelujah, men can come and slide in your DM through the cell phones. Hallelujah, the athletes at the high school uh, can be nasty and promiscuous. Hallelujah, they, they have uh, uh, sex on their mind. They will slide in your DM and talking crazy. Hallelujah, but not just the young folk. Even older people and seniors, Satan is using it, that mechanism to keep you in bondage. Reevaluate your life. Don't say in your mind, he's not talking about me. Oh, I need to say, uh, most of y'all know this teaching, but I'm going to give it to you again. Hey, Amen. you need to get the, the, the rake and not the shovel. With the shovel, the spiritual shovel, you said, oh, he's talking about Brother Duke. This word is going out. Because when you the instrument of a shovel, you get some dirt and you throw it away from it. Like a snow shovel, you get that snow and you throw it away from it. But we need the rake. We need the spiritual rake. And say, this, this word is for me. You rake. He said, when you rake it, you rake towards you. You need that spiritual rake. I can hear somebody saying, I'm not, it's not that bad right now. I can quit if I want to. I really don't like him. Amen. He's just my friend. Hey, man, I really don't like her. She just, she just, you know, we, we understand each other. The devil's trying to use that thing to trap you. Hallelujah. The trap work like this. You know it coming. You don't even see it coming in like this on you. You the key, 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 giggling, and we so, you know, he my friend. That thing after a while go like that, and you in the bondage. You in bondage. Hallelujah. Hey, man, we teach everything here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Cell phone. I could preach a whole sermon on cell phones. The Holy Ghost got me stuck on that thing. Somebody in here is, you need to, even if you're not doing nothing evil, it's wasting your time. You can be writing a prayer journal. Hallelujah, during that time, you can I, I dare you to go on a, 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 a social media fast. The Lord will bless you this whole week and take that time to get back into even natural things, crocheting. Hallelujah, to witnessing to somebody. Get your art back out. Get your writing back out. Hallelujah, most of all, get your prayer life back out. Replace 
filled with a prayer life. And listen, this is not just for old people. When I was younger, I used to think being saved was just for old people. Like, oh man, that's, I'm gonna have, I'm 16, I'm 17, I'm 18, I'm 21, I'm 22. That's an old thing. But you know what? The Bible says, remember thou creator in the days of your youth. If you really want to be blessed, get God in your youth. That way you can avoid eviction. You can avoid divorce. You can avoid, hallelujah, foreclosure. You can avoid bad credit and bad relationships. Let God lead you through the Holy Ghost. Am I talking to somebody today? Hallelujah. If I'm not talking to anybody else, I'm talking to myself. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let me get done. I'm already in overtime. Take up your cross. Point two, I'm going to do the last few points quickly. The Bible says take up your cross. The cross represents things you have to go through as a Christian. Suffering. It's a suffering way. Sometimes you need healing in your heart. You've been in a lot of relationship damage. Your heart needs to be healed. You don't even realize that the Holy Ghost wants to heal your heart. You've been in so much damage. Some woman, some man, some divorce, some relationship, some that you've had bad dealings with. And it hurts you so bad and it's still there. And you notice that it'll come back up sometimes when you're talking or you're dealing with somebody. And every day, after every other day, or in a random situation, that thing will come right back up. And it's anger. You'll lash out on somebody. Or you'll close up when God's trying to bless you because you still need healing. But take up your cross and follow him. Yeah. Amen. That's self-denial. <laughs> Just like Jesus carried the cross, you carry a cross too. Sometimes the healing process is painful. It hurts. Donna McCurkin said, what if it hurts? I trust you, Lord. What if it doesn't work the first time that you try? I trust you, Lord. Will you still believe in me? He's, he's calling you. He wants you to trust him. Thirdly, told you I'm moving fast now. We must lose our own life. Cancel your plans. Cancel your plans. Just like when you're on the computer, you hit cancel. Or you start typing something in the phone, you hit cancel. You start over. And the video game is reset. Reset your life. Make your life open to what God has for you. Don't try to force your relationship plans with somebody else. Now, I'm going to be transparent. Don't try to force your relationship plans. I meant to say with God's plans. When I was single and younger, before I met the love of my life, amen, I would, I would be liking somebody, which is, you know, embarrassing a little bit, but I'd be liking somebody, and Lord, let this be the one. It, it was just a, a ragamuffin, just a, I don't even know how I was thinking, just a, you know, didn't, I need somebody that speaks three languages, that's full of the Holy Ghost. I need somebody with two master's degrees, that's working on a doctorate, that's a classical pianist, a first lady, they have to be a first lady, this is my criteria. They have to be a first lady, they have to last name be child, they have to be a London child. <laughs> Amen. That's my criteria. I got high standards. You have to have at least two master's degrees. <laughs> Amen. I would, I would be in high school or whatever trying to talk to somebody and the Lord, eh, cancel. Nope. Then I got in line with what God wanted me to do. Then he sent the right person for me. Amen. We must lose our own life. That means cancel your plans. Our plans are selfish anyway. Fourthly, gaining the world to lose your soul. Gaining the world. If you gain the whole world, you'll lose your soul. What does it profit to gain the whole world? Like Beyonce, like Michael Jackson. What did it profit Michael Jackson? That people can listen to his albums when he's dead? That has nothing to do with his soul. That don't profit him at all. That benefits us on the earth. Somebody listen to Billy Jean, oh, how he can dance. What spiritual profit does that have for Michael Jackson in the afterlife? None. We have an opportunity to live for God right now. The profit is you serve the Lord. That's how it profits you. <laughs> serve him now, even the more. Is having a career worth it? Is being rich and famous worth hell? Is being the most popular person in school worth losing your soul? What would you give? What would you give up in exchange for your soul? 
Would you take $10 million for your soul? Would you want $10 million on this earth to be rich and have a private jet and to go to Paris anytime you want and to have every poor pair of Jordans and to have all of the, the most handsome people in your life and the, or the most beautiful women, young men in your life? Would that be worth hell? That's the decision people are making. Would that be worth hell to, to uh, have $15 million every day? Would that be worth it to live all the way to you 90 years old and to have $15 million every single day of your life and knowing that on the 91st birthday you were going to die and go to hell? Would that even be worth it? No. What does it profit a man, I'm almost done, to gain this whole world and lose his soul? That's what Jesus is asking. Fifthly and lastly, it's time to be bold towards the Lord. Stop being ashamed. Stop being ashamed of God. That last verse we read says, Whosoever, verse 38, back in the Mark text, Mark 8, 38, Whosoever there shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed. The Lord has something to say about us being bold. I know that we have different temperaments. Some people are shy, some people are aggressive, but he don't want you to pretend anymore that you're not a Christian. I did that in school. Like nobody, I didn't do things that was ungodly, but I just didn't want nobody to know I was saved. That was the devil working on me. And I remember when Steve was in the church, he carried his Bible to school. That always inspired me. He would be getting in biblical debates in study hall. That was, that was the bomb to me. That, <laughs> that's fire, as they say. <laughs> that is really, man, to think about somebody doing that, that's cool. Amen. Or David, my son, I didn't even got a, David's here, he, he goes to, the, he went to college, he's in college now, and he goes to the Bible study, the Young Life Church, and he's on fire. Amen. And, and my other children, and Simone, they're reading their Bibles. To me, that's, that's what's up. I didn't even do that. Don't be ashamed of him, even in your youth. Amen. I'm going to end with this. And I'm just taking my time a little bit because we've got an afternoon service. We're going to be here. Um, I'm going to end with this story. I had a friend named CJ. I had a lot of friends that I grew up with in the inner city that uh, we took different paths. CJ used to go to church with me. His name is Calvin. And um, Calvin got into some trouble. I'm not going to put this business out there, but Calvin got into trouble and he took a different path. He was a, a, one of the the drug dealers, the big drug dealers in the city. And uh, he had all of these cars. Calvin had property, he was my age. He had property, he had uh, businesses that he acquired through nefarious acts and through uh, illegal trades. And he had a bunch of cars. And uh, somebody came into his house and killed him. A rival drug dealer, they say. It came and killed him, and, and it hurt me because I was really close to him. We used to go to church together, and I have a lot, that's the story of a lot of my friends uh, that died in the streets. And the saddest thing was at the funeral, uh, they were arguing over who was going to get his stuff. At the funeral, they went to his house after the funeral, was trying to find keys to the car, and his clothes, just black people just trifling, you know, just <laughs> heavy. <laughs> trying to find his, his clothes, his polos, and his Jordans. You know, my Jordans. That, that dead man's clothes. It's sick, man. It's just trifling. All of that stuff that my buddy had, I'm going to say this again, had no spiritual value. He had gold, silver. He was fly. He used to like to dress nice. He had all of the nicest clothes, nice cars. He was, he was, the, he was the man. He was that, that guy in the street. But that had no value for him. What does it profit a man to gain his own world and lose his soul? The scripture says, I mean, the song says this. I have decided to follow Jesus. You have to make a choice. You have to make a decision. Even if you're saved, it's a daily walk. Even if you're already saved, sanctified, filled the Holy Ghost. It's a daily walk. Tomorrow, you have to make a decision to keep serving God. Tomorrow, you have to wake up and say, I'm going to do what God told me to do. 
may already be saved, but God got some work for you to do. He don't want you to be on spiritual cruise control and say, I'm saved, and I'm just going to sit down and wait for the coming of the Lord. I'm just going to sit here and wait for God to come back. Don't bother me. I'm just going to work my little job. Don't bother me. I'm saved. I'm going to swing my legs. I'm waiting on the Lord to come back. Come on, Jesus. That's not what he wants you to do. Who's going to tell your relatives about Jesus? Who's going to pray for your nieces and nephews that's out in the streets? Who's going to pray for your little cousins that's having babies and all these things that's on drugs? Who's going to pray for your cousins and your relatives and your friends that are hooked on drugs, that are hooked on crystal meth, that are taking edibles, that are vaping? Who's going to pray for them? Who's going to tell them about Jesus? You sitting up there hiding it in the shame of being a Christian? Hallelujah. People are dying and going to hell. Hallelujah. I had at least eight to ten friends that died in the streets. Hallelujah. And there was times I wouldn't say nothing about Jesus to them because I was embarrassed. Hallelujah. But this is a dying world. And God needs somebody to take a stand and be bold. And get out, get up out of their seat and say, I'm a Christian. And I don't care who knows. And I'm saved. And I'm sanctified. And I'm Holy Ghost filled. And I'm fire baptized. And I got Jesus devil inside. And I'm running. Right Running, uh, running for my life. Uh, if anybody asks you uh, what's the matter with me, uh, tell them that I'm saved, uh, sanctified, uh, Holy Ghost filled, uh, fire baptized. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I feel this thing today. I'm glad that the Lord saved me. Hallelujah, if the Lord didn't save me, uh, I would be just like my friends. Uh, hallelujah, either in prison uh, or either on drugs uh, or either six feet under. Uh, but one day, uh, the Lord Jesus saved me uh, and he sanctified me uh, and he filled me with the Holy Ghost. Uh, now I feel like running for Jesus. Uh, the devil didn't. I wasn't ashamed to serve the devil. I'm not going to be ashamed to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. We don't know when he's coming back. Hallelujah. It's Sunday, September the 17th. The Lord might come back on that September the 25th. Be ye also ready. It's such an hour that you think not. The Son of Man, the Son of Man must appear. He needs some Holy Ghost soldiers. He needs some sanctified soldiers. He needs some bold soldiers. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, to your will, Lord. Raise up an army that's sold out and bold for Jesus. Somebody shout yes. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory. I feel this thing. Oh, Jesus, uh, I feel them in my hands, uh, I feel them in my feet, uh, I feel them all over me, uh, it's just like fire, uh, you gotta cut off Pastor Child, uh, people ready to go eat the chicken, uh, yeah, but I feel them in my heart, uh, I feel them in my hands, uh, somebody wants some baked beans, uh, but I want Jesus right now, he's done so much for me, you don't know like I know, what the Lord has done for me. He picked me up when I was in the grips. When I was out in the streets, I was with the gangbangers. He saved my soul. Hallelujah. I was around death. My friends was carrying guns. They were on their way to dying. Death sitting right next to me. I didn't know that the Lord had his hand on me. I know the Lord. He laid his hands on me. He laid his hands on me. His healing hands. Deliverance hands. Saving hands. I know the Lord. He laid his hands on me. Yeah. You gotta cut off past the child. They want some chicken. I know it's good to you. I know it feels like Jeremiah. Fire, shut up in my bones. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You got to cut off. Somebody wants some Diet Coke. Somebody
Somebody wants some mashed potatoes. Uh, somebody wants some baked beans. Uh, oh, they want some fried chicken. I got to stop. <laughs> oh, but he's so good to me. I could have been dead, sleeping in my grave. I could have been on crack, sleeping on the streets. But God, but God, but God, but God, pick me up, turn me around, take my feet on solid ground. Every time I turn around, God is blessing me. Woo! Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You never had a son. Thank you, your son. Thank you, son. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Come on and praise the Lord. Come on and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Give me some altar music. Give me some altar music. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. How excellent. Touch right now. Hallelujah. This dear sister. Hallelujah. Sister Sister Trump. Sister Dukes. Pray for them right now. Touch right now. Lord, you know what they need. You know what their heart is saying. You know what's in their heart. In Jesus' name. Work, Lord. Continue to work. 
even beyond this service. Many times the service is just the initial new work that you're doing. Touch right now in the mind, in the body, in the spirit. Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord. We say have your way in Jesus' name. We say have your way, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. Come on and clap your hands in Jesus' name. You can be seated. Nobody loves the Lord. You can be seated in the presence of God. somebody, if y'all can just bear it with us. Amen. I'm holding y'all long again this week. I apologize. Get that, put that chair right down there. If anybody desires to join the church, we teach that joining the church and being saved are two separate things. Now in days they combine them. Come on up, sister. Come on up. Sit in that chair right there. Joining the church is, is, is an official matter. And the Bible says they added to the church daily, such as should be saved. Hallelujah. She's already saved in the Christian. And then I'm going to go ahead and stop.